Hey guys, it's Glassboxed here and today we're going to follow on from our previous video tutorial on Git branching and take it a step further and see how we can actually combine two different branches into a single branch. So what does this mean and why would you want to do this? We've already discussed the fact that we are on this branch called the master branch. If we do a kit, if we do a quick git branch, we can see that we only have the one branch. We've also discussed this idea that we will create multiple branches for the purpose of experimenting. But what if you actually want to create, say, another branch for the purpose of doing something, you know, something that will add value to your project, but you don't want to do it straight on the master branch. So your intention of creating a new branch in this instance is to genuinely do some work and then somehow copy everything from the branch you created into your master branch. Before we do that, why would you want to do that? You know, why, why do such a thing in the first place? Whenever you work in a Git project, or rather, when you work, you know, in, in actual projects where there are multiple people committing or contributing towards a Git project, that particular Git project will always have a baseline version, which most of the time is called the master version, the master branch. So when someone comes along and tries to add some value into your project, what they will do is create a git branch or they will create a branch and they will do whatever they want to do you know they, they they work on that branch and once they're happy with what they've done what they would want to do is actually merge those changes into your master branch or in other words they want to effectively copy their changes from their branch into your branch or into the master branch so why would people do that? Well, it's because of this. If you have a master branch, and let's just say you have two people working on the same branch. In very small projects, there is a strong possibility that these two people at some point will end up changing the same file, but create multiple versions of that same file in the same branch. Now, this can be a problem because what that means is you'll have more than one version of that one file. And when you want to say commit it, you won't be able to. You'll also be effectively stepping on each other's toes. For example, let's just say you're working on the same branch. Someone goes in and changes something and let's just say they take a break and then the second person comes in and looks at that file. They will see changes that they did not make, someone else made because they are effectively working on the same file same version in that same branch so the reason you might want to create say in this instance two different branches one branch for one person and the other branch for the other person let's just say let's just call person the first person person a and the second person person b let's say person a creates branch a and person b creates branch b and they end up doing their own things there again is the possibility that they will end up changing the same file at some point. However, because they've been working on their own branches, they have the baseline version from master, but they are not conflicting with each other. So once they've completed whatever work they want to do, and they want to merge in those changes, they want to effectively copy changes from their branch into the master branch they will be able to do it with ease because for starters, they are not using the same file because they have their own copy of the same file, but not working on the same file. So when they decide to copy in their changes, they should be able to copy in with possibly some issues, but predominantly the issue of working on the same file will not matter anymore. Now, in this instance, we're only talking about two people. What if you have a project? where you have many people, seven, eight, you know, tens of people in the quote unquote real world, 
in commercial projects, you have, on numerous occasions, a number of people working on the same project. So the only way to make sure that the work that they're doing doesn't conflict with each other is to make sure that the work they're doing is on a branch that they own. And once they've done their work, they can basically copy or merge those changes into the branch. So today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a branch. We're going to do some stuff on the branch. Really doesn't matter what, anything is okay. And then we're going to merge those changes into our master branch. We're also going to delete the other branch and we're going to make sure that the changes that were copied into the master branch were actually persisted on the master branch. So let's do that. So first things first, let's create a branch. Git branch. And this time we're going to call it, well, when you create a branch, ideally you want to give your branch some meaningful name. Why is it important to give a branch a meaningful name? Let's just say a single person. Say you, for instance, you've created a branch and you're doing some work on it. But let's just say for some particular reason you don't finish that work and you end up creating another branch to do some other kind of work. If you end up calling your branches, you know, branch one, branch two, branch three, you will have no way of identifying what the contents of that branch actually are or what the purpose of that branch actually was because the name of your branch just means next to nothing. So it is always in your interest to name your branches something that actually gives you some clue as to what the change in that branch is. So let's just say in this instance, we are going to basically create another text file in our project. So if we go to our project, we've got a simple directory and in that directory we've got two text files. So let's just say in this new branch, we're going to create another text file. That's it. So let's give our branch name something meaningful, something that will help describe that particular code change. So I'm going to call it something like Okay, now let's just say git branch. So I can see that there are now two branches and obviously I will have to check that branch out. But before I do that, let me show you something. Let's go ahead and delete that branch. Okay, let's do a git branch. When creating a new branch, it is actually possible for you to create the branch and switch to it as part of creating a branch. So to date, what we've been doing is we've been creating a branch and we've been using git checkout to switch to that branch. What we want to do instead is actually create a branch and switch to it as part of the same action. To achieve this, what you would want to do is git checkout and notice at the moment we only have the one branch. So the only thing we can check out is basically master because master is the only branch that exists at the moment. But if we pass in this command dash b this means git checkout a new branch. And let's give our branch a name. Notice that we are now on a different branch to what we were on previously. Therefore, this must be a new branch. But at the same time, we've also checked out the new branch. So this is a really quick way of creating a new branch and checking out. So let's carry on. We said that as part of this branch, all we want to do is add a new file. So what we're going to do is just copy this and just give it a new name and you will subscribe because you are awesome. If only you could like the same video twice. So we're quite happy with the statement. We're not going to change it at all. Okay. So let's just do a git status and we can see we've added a file. Okay. So we're going to quickly just commit that, so git add. So let's go ahead and commit that file. So we're gonna say git commit minus m. And we're going to say adding new test 03 dot, oops, 03 dot text file. Okay, and let's do git log. So we can see that we've added in a new file. 
okay but we know that we've done that on a different branch okay so let's check out our master version and let's do a git log on this so this does not have that commit i mean why would it the commit that we've done was on the other branch so we are now at a state where we've done a change on a different branch and we actually want to merge those changes into our master branch so we want to merge the changes from this particular change into this particular branch so how do we do that well we can use what's called the git merge command to do this all you need to do is first of all you need to make sure that you are on the branch where you want to merge changes into let me explain what that means to merge a change into an existing branch is another way of saying I want you to look at my existing branch the ex existing version of my project and I want you to copy in all the differences between my current branch and the branch that I'm telling you about ie merge the changes between two branches but merge them into the branch that I'm currently in so if I say this git merge so this means merge changes so I am currently on the master branch so I am saying merge changes from something into this branch and now I give the name of that branch which was I believe new text file so if you notice here I checked out master and I did a git log and the latest git log on that branch was reverting test01 file to its original form and then I did git merge and I provided the name of the branch that I want the changes to be merged from and into master again let me explain when we do a git merge it is almost the same as saying look at the differences between two different branches in this case the branch I'm currently on and the branch I want to copy from and copy in the changes from the from branch to the to branch so now if I do a git log notice I'm on my master branch if I do a git log I can see that the commit from the from branch ie new text file is now on the to branch ie master so i've successfully copied in the changes from one branch into another branch if i do a git status it says that the branch i'm currently on has absolutely no changes to the project repository if i do a git branch I can see that the other branch is still there I've merged in my changes there's no need for this branch to be there anymore so I can say a git branch minus D new and then do a git branch again I'm just a master now I can do a git log and the change is there and if I open up the file the file is also there and the text is identical to what it was previously so in this video, we've learned a very important lesson. We've learned how to effectively make changes on a branch and then copy them into a different branch. So why is it important to do this? Remember, going back possibly to the last video, we said that you do not want to add unnecessary noise. You, know, you do not want to pollute the main version of your code what you want to do is do it somewhere else in another branch and when you create a branch you may create a branch for the purpose of experimenting or actually doing some work that adds value in some shape or form so today we decided to create a branch for the purpose of actually doing something that we want to do but we didn't want to do it on our main version we didn't want to do it simply because we thought maybe we might break something we might accidentally add something there are a number of reasons once we made our change on that branch and we were happy with it we then 
checked out our master branch and we merged in the changes from our old branch into our master branch. We did not touch our master branch at all, but our master branch now contains all the changes that we want it to contain. So from this video, you should now see how important it is to make any changes on branches, but also how we can, once we've made the changes, copy those changes in into our master branch. Now, there are a lot of other things to discuss here. This is what you would call the happy path. This is where everything works first time and there are no problems. You can always run into issues called the, uh, well, they're called conflict issues, which is a, a whole host of problems which we will at some point get into. The focus of this video was to simply see how we could copy changes from one branch into another. And that's it for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, it's Glassbox here, and I really appreciate you guys watching my video. And if you've liked it, then give it a thumbs up. If you already haven't, hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my latest video releases covering all aspects of technical testing. Also, follow me on Twitter and Google. Links in the description below. Until next time, ciao.